that your first pregnancy is nerve-wracking and those ultrasounds can have you on pins and needles. So it was for James and Emily Stark, who found out 18 years ago they were pregnant for the first time. And the news that came after that would lead to a medical miracle. Watch. When Emily and James Stark got pregnant for the first time, Emily had a funny gut feeling. We were super excited. I just always knew in my heart that we would have twins. It was just one of those gut things. I said, okay, it'll be <laughs> fine, whatever. It, it, you know, it's that, what are the odds of that? Emily was right, but what their doctor told them at their next ultrasound appointment would change their lives forever. He looked at us and he said, they're joined somewhere in the lower region. I just remember looking at the ceiling and I tuned out and James kind of took over from there. Obviously we knew what conjoined twins were. I mean, you see stories and you read about them. He brought out this you know, thousand page medical book and he had you know, flipped through it to conjoined twins and there's literally two paragraphs in that book on conjoined twins. Conjoined twins are rare, about one in 50 to 60,000 births. Unfortunately, it's estimated that between 40 to 60% of those births are delivered stillborn, with 35% surviving only one day. I think it was always, they will survive. I don't think there was ever a question. On March 9, 2001, Lexi and Sydney Stark were born. And despite the expected complications, they were healthy baby girls. The girls were squirming and James went over to Lexi and he said, Oh, Lexi, are you having a nightmare? A nightmare that your sister is stuck to your butt? And all the nurses giggled. They were all like, okay, this family is going to be just fine. Exactly seven months later, the girls went in for separation surgery on October 9th. I carried them down to the operating room and I laid them down and we said goodbye. And I think that's the moment you knew we could be saying goodbye forever, or we could be getting just one baby back. Then came the long wait, but the hospital staff continually lifted their spirits. Every single hour this nurse came in and she gave us better and better and better news. And the same nurse all day. All day. My guess is she wasn't going anywhere no matter how long it took. And then finally came the words they were waiting for all day. She came up and she said, we have two babies. And the room just, just started exploded. screaming. Just you so could that hear cool. that. Woohoo! Two babies. The Stark twins no longer shared body parts, but they would forever have an unbreakable bond. Wow. Please welcome Emily Stark and James Stark. Incredible. Uh, is it emotional to see that? It, yeah, it, it doesn't go away, yeah. you know, and we got the fairy tale. So that's the piece that, you know, we know the ending so far. Yeah, right. <laughs> and in the beginning, is it true you chose not to tell your friends? You're at the baby shower and you, you didn't, they knew twins, but they didn't know conjoined twins. Yes. I, it was so hard to, to verbally say it. So it took a little bit. I'm a process thinker. If you're a good friend of mine, you know, I'm a process thinker. So it took time to kind of really subtle in the fact that we were having conjoined twins and so we where, where were they conjoined and, and you know how complex did the doctor say it would be to to separate them they were conjoined uh, the spine and the spinal cord were both joined and then they shared some intestines and then obviously their their butts were stuck together and i mean they knew they could do it the doctors knew but they were thinking paralysis was a real option. Right. They never gave numbers, but they said, you know, worst case, paralysis, maybe colostomies for the rest of their lives. Oh. So, so they, they didn't have the surgery until they were seven months? Yeah. Right. So can we just talk about those first six, seven months? Like, what did the clothes look like? How did you handle that? Well, lucky for us, they stayed in the NICU for 17 days, and those nurses put them on a feeding schedule. So they came home on an eating and feeding schedule of four hours. Um, and what we did is a onesie. And so essentially you put the onesie over the top and where they were joined is where it'd come up and snap. So two little legs came out of each hole. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did that. Um, so you had like a four leg onesie? Well, w right once you Once you like sewed it together? Actually, my mother-in-law sewed a few things together because I was adamant that when they came home from the hospital, they'd be wearing pants only because it was harder, I'm sure. Um, but she sewed things together. It just took too long to get them in those kinds of items. And so we typically just went with the onesie every day. Aww. Yeah. I know you, was, you couldn't breastfeed because 
We tried. You know, one would have been. <laughs> yeah. We tried. I, like I, so many challenges that you we did. To deal with. We did the pump and fed them that way. But what we realized is if you put a pillow on your lap and you put the girls on it, you could see them and then you could feed both of them at once. Oh. And the cool part is one got a bath, the other got a bath. Right. You fed one, why not feed her? Right, right. You know, and so it became the double wide singleton. Um, <laughs> so we feel like God gave us a handle on twins really easily. You refer to the, the separation uh, <laughs> operation as what? Can you tell the audience what you call it? My best friend, he called it, he's a sisterectomy. <laughs> it was a sisterectomy. <laughs> sisterectomy. And now we can laugh about it because we know they're well, but that must have been the hardest day of your life while you were waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, I think it was harder the two weeks prior to that because um, we had done all the prep surgeries. We had done so many things to get to this day. And about two weeks prior, I looked at James and I said, are we playing God? Are we messing with perfection? Because we could keep them together and we could keep them, but are we messing this up? Mm -hmm. And that was my moment of, we could really be messing this up. But you, you from what I read, realized you, you are in charge of making these decisions for your child. I mean, that's one of the things you want others to know, right? Like, James, you tell me that parents need to feel empowered in these moments. No, I mean, they're your children. It's your choice. I mean, you don't let anybody make that decision for you. And we spent four or five months before they were born making these decisions and then another six or seven months making these decisions. And at the end of the day, you have to trust that you made the right decision with the information you had at the time. Right. If something went wrong, you're never prepared for that, but at least you went into it you know, knowing what you were doing. It's a risk, but it's a calculated risk. I mean, you had, you had great doctors advising you on what oh, the odds absolutely. were. Um, well, of course, now we all want to meet the girls, don't we? Right? <laughs> Now, 17-year-old twin daughters, Lexi and Sydney, are here. So back in 2000, doctors told Emily and James Stark news that shocked them. They had discovered that their twin babies were conjoined. They shared intestines, a tailbone, and a spine. On March 9, 2001, Emily gave birth to Lexi and Sydney, and only seven months later, the infants were headed into a high-risk surgery to be separated. So how are they doing 17 years later? Come on out, Sydney and Lexi. <laughs> Hi, Sydney, right? Hi. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hi, Lexi. Hi. Good to have you. Yay. Let's see. So happy to have you here. Thank you. We're so glad to be here. How adorable are your parents? <laughs> Oh my God, they're precious. <laughs> the best. We are. We are. Okay, so let so you you don't have any major health problems as a result of this. No, thankfully, thankfully, no. No, any lingering effects of this at all? We have been very blessed to no. have only minor. Wow. Now, what about? Do, do you have a big old scar from the separation? Yes. Yeah, we have scars on our back, and then from the colostomy, we do have scars on our stomach. So you can see when we wear stuff like swimsuits, but yeah. it doesn't bother us too much at all. I was saying to your parents during the break, I would think this would be the most fun reveal ever. When you're, when you're meeting a new person, like, hey, guess what? You know, right? I mean, like, do, are people stunned when they find out? Yeah, when we tell yeah. them that we only have, like, one butt cheek, and they're like, really? I didn't even notice. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we get the whole, oh, I had no idea all the time. So is it true? You're, you have very different personalities, yes? yes? All right, now, who's the outgoing one? We both are outgoing in it, very different yeah, ways. Yeah, it depends on the situation. Okay. And so, like, is, is there one who's, like, more of an extrovert and one who's a little bit more of an introvert and one who's, like, bigger and one who's a little quieter? Um, I tend to go for it first, yeah. okay. and then she will after me. Is it true that when you sleep to this day, if you take a nap together <laughs> in the same bed, you revert to your... To the we conjoined. call it conjoined twin position? Where we both kind of go back into like this back to back with her nuzzled right like, here, I her head. <laughs> and that's how they were? Yeah. yeah. No, it's 100% how they were. And when they're super stressed and you walk in their bedroom, you're like, oh, 
they're stressed because they're back in that <laughs> oh, position. Oh my gosh. Does it make you feel better to get into that position? It's <laughs> just a comfort position. Yeah, and just really. being by her, putting my head on her just is it's so calming. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they we've heard about twins having senses, you know. Sometimes you hear about like a mother and a child having it, and sometimes you hear about twins having it. So you have had some of those experiences, yes? Yeah. For sure, for sure. Like how? What, what has happened? We were probably five or six, and I was in the hospital, and I was getting a shot, and it was a painful shot. And I wasn't, I was unbothered. And my parents were on the phone, and my dad was telling my mom that my sister was freaking out, <laughs> and she was in tears and hysterics, and I'm just getting the shot, and nothing's happening. She was in a totally different place. Oh, yeah. like yeah. Nothing she was, was happening to you. And I was at the hospital. So we were in complete different areas. And she was... And what about, like, if one of you is upset, does the other one... Oh. Yes. So yeah. in situations where I get upset, or when it's a situ upsetting situation for me, sometimes I won't get upset. Like, I'll just kind of be like, oh, it's not a big deal. While well, she's over here like, that's so awful. Oh, my goodness. And she's, like, freaking out for me. And I'm like... And but do you ever not know why you're feeling upset? And then, Sometimes I do, and then she'll come home, and she's like, oh, I had a bad day, and I'm like, there it is. <laughs> Can you imagine? I guess it all evens out in the end, because some of your bad days go to her, and some of hers go to you, so it's not like having the double bad. So now you're about to, you're, you're going to go off to college now? Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited. I'll be applying this month for my first pick college. And will it be, are you going to go together, or are you going to go apart? No, actually, no. super apart. I want to go to uh, University of Missouri in St. Louis, and she wants to go to University of Calgary. Oh. So not only is it a different state, it's a... Who are you going to snuggle with when it's time to get in the position? Don't answer. We'll talk when your parents aren't here. <laughs> Listen, thank you for telling your story. I know there's such a beautiful story. They, they, they didn't see a lot of positive literature out there on conjoined twins, and they wanted other parents to know that there is a potential great uh, outcome, um, depending on your circumstances, and there is so much love here in, in this family and beyond. Thank you. All the best to you. Good luck at college. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.